Hey guys, Dave at the Fly Shop again for another Friday um, tip. Today, or I guess last week, we talked about tight line rigging um, and um, had a good response on that. Uh, so we thought, since uh, we do get a lot of questions on indicators, what's your favorite, what should I use for this application, things like that. Um, I thought today we could talk a little bit about indicators, standard indicators um, that you're all used to that essentially float your fly or float on the surface of the water. Um, and when you get a grab, the thing goes under, much like a bobber. Um, and, uh, and yeah, it's a little different. Uh, we talked about with the tight line rig, we stick with our lowest diameter tippet um, that we can get with. We're not really casting that rig. This rig we are casting, so we're using a knotless tapered leader on this uh, to transfer that energy nice and cleanly um, so you don't get your casts all puddly. Everything's going to land all nice when you cast. Um, it's a little clunkier than, uh, well, it depends really on what what indicator you, you use. Um, it could be clunky. Um, it could be real light. It could be like casting a dry fly, but if you're using a bunch of SSG, like heavy, heavy weight, um, you're not going to be able to float a dry fly. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about um, mostly selecting um, an indicator for the application uh, you need it for. Um, we'll start with um, kind of the standards. Uh, Mickey Screwballs um, has been around for a while. Um, I know Mickey really well. These are great. Um, these are just kind of a standard old. Here, let me have a package over here. It has a little screw on top with a little rubber washer right there. You take this little screw, and you unscrew it just a little bit, and you can actually just take your, your leader, wrap it around that once, and then this little rubber washer pinches that down, and this isn't going to move without some real pulling on it. Um, definitely won't move during a cast or something like that. Um, so that's one option. Um, and you're going to hear this a lot from me. Um, the the, the the con to using a setup like this is the fact that when you want to move your indicator, you're going to have, every time you move it, you're going to have this little, this little thing here, right? Um, little shock absorber, I call it. Um, and if you're, a if you're in a drift boat and you're setting and forgetting, not a big deal. Um, those kinks probably aren't going to matter a whole lot. But when you're walking, waiting, setting your indicator one and a half times the depth you're fishing, you're never fishing the same depth usually when you're walking and waiting. Um, not in a drift boat either, but we kind of just cheat in drift boat. You cover so much ground, it doesn't matter. But uh, um, but yeah, so a lot of times what you'll do is you'll once you move your indicator, you're gonna you know straighten that out a little bit. It comes out pretty good. Um, you move this thing 10, 12 times, and there's gonna be you know there's gonna be some kinks in it. Um, that is, uh, but that's how that's how we've done it forever. A similar one that's gonna leave some 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 kinks, but it's probably our second best selling indicator um, is just the thingamabobber. Um, and you've all, you've, you've, a lot of you have used these. Um, these have been around forever. Syndicators, um, thingamabobbers, um, kind of the same deal, but these work like this. You actually take your leader, you loop it, right? And you run it through the hole. If you can do it, oh, there we go. Don't ask me to tie a knot today. Got all thumbs, it looks like. Okay, so there's my there's my thingamabobber set up, right? And I like to kind of crank these down a little bit. Um, but that's that. Now it's you can see right here, it's it's pretty hingy. It's a pretty hingy setup. Um, it, it would definitely still work just fine. Um, but this all this slack here um, is is a deterrent to uh, catching fish really um, you, it's a little bit tighter in the water and things like that but the tighter the line you have um, in line um, I found it to be better um, but then the the real downfall of this guy is when you move this thing um, especially when you caught a couple fish on it and it, it's cinched down and and things like that this is the biggest that's the that's the S I always talk about if you ever talk to me in the shop that's the S you get with the thingamabobber right and then when you get up into this 40 pound stuff near the but the end of your butt section of your leader and it gets harder to pull that that little S out of there so you get these little shock absorbers into your line um, doesn't matter a whole heck of a lot a lot of people fish for a lot of years um, with these things and they did just fine um, there's some uh, there's some better options though in this world the this is this is the kind of indicator I would suggest for for um, you know a lot of weight um, heavier flies um, and deep 
you know, deep water where um, something like a, um, a dry dropper setup would just sink your, even a foam fly, would just sink your foam fly, you have so much weight on underneath. Um, really the best answer we've seen in the last three or four years to uh, this sort of setup is the airlock indicator. They come in a lot of different sizes. We have this big one here for, for just example purposes only. I'll show you on this because it's um, a lot easier to see. Um, there's two ways to do it. Um, you, basically you just unscrew this. It uh, has this little plastic. I uh, hope somebody did something weird there. Um, it has this this plastic little screw top here. It has this little rubber washer on the real version. This is a really small little washer. Um, that's underneath. That stays right there. And the line just lays on top just like this. So you just lay it right down in there on top. Okay. Screw that down. This is one way to do it. And hypothetically, this thing is going to stay. First of all, it's perfectly in line uh, with your whole rig. Um, a lot of people like this 90 degree. Um, and it's a preference thing. Um, I haven't found it to uh, make a huge difference, I don't think, but I'm still experimenting with it. But in order to do the 90 degree, um, you just run it through your actual little uh, your little screw top here. All right, you lay it in that same little um, slot, screw this down on top, and now you're looking at a 90 degree, um, which is pretty cool. Um, it's a pretty cool idea. So this is the end of your of your leader, or this is the end that's going to your tip top. This is the end that's going to your fly. Um, so it's kind of cool. You get this 90 degree little bend here. A lot of people prefer that. Um, so there's two ways to rig those up. This is our best selling indicator. Um, I've seen it fly out of two shops. Um, the year it came out, it was hands down the biggest thing in the in the uh, indicator world. Um, they're, they're awesome. They weigh a lot though. This is what, when we're talking clunky rigs, when you're throwing a lot of weight and it's gonna be clunky anyways, this is what you're gonna be using for the most part. This, um, or these air, um, or these uh, thingamabobbers, those are the two best, in my opinion, for, you know, nine feet, 12, you know, 10 feet, things like that. Now, what happens when you fish in a lake and like you're, you're fishing with coronamid larva and coronamid pupa at, you know, 20 feet deep. Not an uncommon. I'm from yeah. Eastern Sierra. We fish Crowley Lake, where you never fish above 20. I mean, rarely do we fish. You know, we're fishing 15, 20 feet deep all day, every day. Um, right on the bottom, blood. Um, you know, blood midges on the bottom, um, pupa throughout the water column. Deadly. Getting as close to the bottom is key, you can is key, in my opinion, on uh, on uh, when you're uh, fishing with coronamid uh, larva and pupa. But um, what you do when you have a 20 foot rig, right? Normally you have your indicator, say you have a stationary indicator like an airlock or something, and you have, you have it up here, now you have 20 feet of line between, between this and your bottom fly. What happens when you catch that fish? Well, you either have a really good friend in your boat that can, you know, or a really long net, but essentially what's gonna happen is this, this stationary indicator is gonna get to your tip top. If you keep reeling, you're gonna break your rod, um, but you're gonna stop when it hits that tip top. Now you have 20 feet of line between you and the fish. No way you're gonna land it by yourself. Um, I've seen a lot of people try. Um, the best thing is, well, the best thing is to have a good, indi uh, good indicator, proper indicator for the, for um, still water. Um, the only other option is to have somebody in the boat with you or lose the fish. Um, so I'm gonna show you this. This is a relatively new um, indicator to me. I, I've tried them all. I've invented a few of these types of indicators myself, um, and I think this is the best one I've ever seen. This is called the Plum Bobber. Um, it's kind of a funny shape. Um, the teardrop shape like lightning strike used to do, um, still do, um, but I love this thing. It has the little flags on top so you know when you're at depth, it pops up. You can see these, when these little flags are, are up here, that's when you're fishing, right? When it's sitting like this, it's still sinking, pops up, you're fishing. So how this works is, first you find your depth, you throw your forceps in the water, attach to your fly, um, drop it in the water, um, guess on your indicator, you know, put it 50, if you think maybe 15 feet, um, whatever, try there, and uh, drop it down. Essentially what you want to happen is when, you're, when your forcep um, hits the bottom of the lake, you want, your, you want to pull your indicator under just a couple inches, right? That means when this thing's floating, your, your um, coronamid larva or, or pupa or whatever you're fishing um, are just suspended just above the, the, the uh, bottom of the lake bed. That's ideal. Having it 10 inches up works fine. Having it, you know, five feet up from the bottom works fine. 
getting it right off the bottom will increase your numbers tenfold, and I'm not kidding about that. Getting it to the bottom with a with a mid rig is hands down the best tactic you can do. Um, for the most part, rarely they're feeding somewhere else in the water column, but uh, for the most part, hit the bottom. How this works is, before you put your flies on, there's this little piece of rubber tubing right here on a peg with a little loop of some kind of monofilament, heavier monofilament sticking out of that, that little rubber or uh, a little plastic stem there. So all you're gonna do is, you're gonna before you rig up, you're gonna take your 20 foot leader or whatever you're fishing, and you're gonna run that through that little loop, get it to about where you think your depth is, okay? Now, you take this little rubber piece of uh, surgical tubing, and you slide it off that peg and onto, onto your actual leader, okay? Now when you put it back, we're just gonna put this rubber tubing back on the peg, and I'm gonna put a little slack in between. So I'm just gonna slide that rubber tubing right back onto that stem there. Okay, now I have this little loop that's held in place um, with the, with the, uh, the uh, piece of rubber tubing around that, around that peg. So now, the idea here is when you, when you A, set the hook, or B, the weight of the fish um, um, you know, tightens this line up, it's gonna pull that little loop right out of there and it's gonna slide your, your indicator um, all the way down to the fly, hypothetically. So you can fish a 20 foot, 30 foot, 100 foot rig if you had a reason to do it. And when you set the hook or have any weight on the end of this, um, your, it's gonna, your indicator's gonna slide freely um, down to the very end or down to uh, a tippet ring or a swivel or your top fly or whatever the, the next big thing in your rig is. So these are invaluable to have um, in any still water fishing situation um, where you're fishing midges and, and uh, um, even you know calabatus and, um, and other still water staples. Not so much with uh, with um, with uh, damsel damsel flies and things. Those those tend to be higher up in the water column, so um, not necessary for that. But um, killer to have for midges. Um, another really big one would be. We talk those. All right. To get to my favorite here um, for some stuff. Now, we already talked about this being your clunky, you know, it's got to be clunky. It's got to float a good amount of weight and things like that. It's just nature of the beast, man. That's got to be, that's got to um, hold those flies up. What this, this next uh, system I'm going to show you is very similar to, um, to a dry dropper setup, which you probably used um, um, in the past, but essentially what you're going to do is you're just going to tie to the eye of the of the hook of some heavier or not heavier, but a uh, um, beefier dry fly, something tied with foam, something tied with deer hair, something that's going to float um, even with a good amount of weight off of it. So you know, a, a chubby Chernobyl or uh, or just some foam pattern, a big old hopper or something is a good uh, a good one to stick with. Um, and then you're going to tie your you know five feet of of 5x tippet or something off to a to a midge or some betas uh, beta nymph or some subsurface pattern. Now that's great, but like I was saying, it's a it's a, originally it's a static setup. Um, there is no um, you can't switch. You'd have to if you wanted to change your, your distance between your two flies. You'd have to cut tippet off um, or add tippet or whatever. It's a it's a static setup. Um, the best way is. Well, the nice thing about the dry drop setup is this sucker bites back. This indicator I'm going to show you doesn't bite back, but I think it's a better option in most situations. What I mean by bites back is this will actually actually hook fish for you <laughs> sometimes. Um, but the New Zealand strike indicator system is awesome. It's like casting a dry fly. You won't even know it's there. It does feel like it's just a dry fly. It looks like a dry fly. I've had fish come up and eat it just like you've had fish come up and eat you know, thingamabobbers and things like that. Um, we're not dealing with the smartest animals out there. Um, but um, no, there's no hook in it. Um, but you want it to be that way. You want it to be super light. And um, hands down, my favorite for um, um, you know fishing emergers or something that's not super heavily weighted. You can get away with a good amount of weight with this uh, with this setup. But you're going to notice it'll start sinking when you get into like pocket watery stuff, white watery stuff, um, anything where there's foam on the surface and it's churning around. It'll it'll pull this stuff under. Um, this stuff. Is young, is um sorry. It is wool. It is not poly polypropylene um, um you know synthetic material like this is right here. Um, this we've used forever. Just people call them yarn indicators or whatever. They float. They float. Um, I guess technically, if you, you know, you got to put a lot of you know floatants and things like that on them. They're a little more dense uh, in a synthetic um, 
stuff just doesn't uh, doesn't do as good of a job as this stuff. This is pre-treated as well. You can pre-treat this stuff if you want. Um, I would recommend it if you're going to use PolyPro, but this stuff will blow PolyPro out in the water. No pun intended. Um, just treated yarn. They dye it in a few different colors. You can buy refills here. Um, you know, if you only like orange, if you only like black, if you only like uh, um, like the chartreuse colors, whites. I, I like white um, a lot. Oh, let me talk about that real quick because yeah, I have a different I have a different theory on this than everybody else OLD. does. Um, people will tell you, oh, don't get the bright indicators. Don't get the bright indicators. Um, and I mean, everybody's entitled to their opinion and things like that. And I don't have any proof one way or the other that it matters. But I will say this. A lot of people are like, buy the white indicator because the fish don't see it. It blends in with the bubbles on the top of the water. Well, <laughs> when the fish is looking up at a potential meal, they're looking into light. And if you're fishing with an opaque ball, um, bubbles are clear, right? They can see right through them. If you're fishing with an opaque ball, I don't think it matters what color it is. <laughs> if they're looking at an opaque sphere, no matter what the color is up top, right? What color is that airplane when it flies over way above your head? Um, it's hard to tell, right? It's just some shadowy color, right? It's just an opaque blob. So, um, I lived in New Zealand for seven months and threw orange indicators all day, every day, and had no problem catching fish. So, spookiest fish out there, I've thrown orange indicators over their heads and had uh, very little, uh, very little issue with it. But that, by that, you know, if you've, had, if your mileage varies, by all means, by the white indicators, um, because honestly, confidence is, uh, is a huge thing in this sport. So. Um, that said, that's color. Um, everybody sees color differently. Grab a color that you can see well, that you think you'll see well. Experiment with colors. Um, fish does not care, in my opinion. So, how does this work? So, when you buy the kit, which is this is what I would tell you to get if you're just starting out, the kit comes with this little tool. And they've changed this, I think, from when I bought mine. Because this one's a lot nicer than the one I have comes with this cool little tool that you can just attach right to your vest, right? If you can see in there, I actually have one in my hand here, they're preloaded with this, that same surgical tubing that we were just looking at. See those little pieces of the surgical tubing? They just pre-stuff pre them on there, and I'll do that before I go fishing too. I'll just cut a couple of those things, slide them over the, the needle, and you're good to go. That's good for one, two, three, four different indicators. Um, and then it comes with a bunch of that tubing as well inside of here somewhere. Yeah, there's a bunch of, bunch of tubing, a couple different colors of yarn in there. So. Um, you can make, I mean, this will last you a couple of years, just the, just the original kit. Um, but how this works is like this. You basically, you take your little tool here, and you can see there's a little notch right in the end of that needle there. And I'm just going to take, take my leader, put it right in that little notch there, and I'm going to slide that little piece of tubing off my tool and onto my loop. some work to get them off sometimes there we go so my little my little um, grommet or my little rubber piece of tubing is on my on my loop here I'm gonna pop that out of my tool and it's as easy as this you take some of your wool and if you're fishing a lot of weight or if you're if you're uh, you know you're going deep or whatever or you're fishing a lot of white water you can use a big chunk of this stuff and I stack it just like I would stack my you know, before I do a dubbing loop or something when I'm tying a, tying a big old streamer, I like to stack this stuff so all the fibers are, are pretty close to equal. And then you just stick, I mean, this is a lot too. This is a huge chunk of this stuff. This would be for, yeah, some serious whitewater fishing. Um, and, uh, and then, yeah, you just take your little, I just put that through there, about even. And then, let's see if this is enough to, I think this is probably too much to even get this rubber tubing over. <sighs> Oh no, we can make it work. That's too much. Well, it would work like this as well. Because um, essentially, uh, yeah, that'll work just like that. Um, but that is a ton. That's more than I think I've ever used. Uh, so here, let's show you for a demonstration purposes about how much. Probably. If I was fishing Hat Creek with some. Uh, with some small little emergers. This is about all I'd be fishing with. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna stack this, put it in my loop, about even. And slide my little, slide my little grommet up there. I'm just gonna slide that right onto the yarn there or the uh, wool there. See that I just took my, I just took my little loop, 
or my surgical tubing and slid it right onto the end there. Now, the idea here is um, this is now a dynamic setup versus that, uh, that static setup. When I was fishing with a dry fly, I couldn't move that dry fly. Um, I'd have to tie it or I'd have to retie. Um, with this setup, I can just slide this up my indicator and move it to wherever I want. So now, I'm, now I'm, every time I move, I can uh, I can just take this thing, move up my next spot. I'm gonna go fish the six inches of riffle down here with my WD-40. I'm gonna move it down here and only fish, you know, 12 inches or so. Now I'm gonna go to that deep six foot pool. I'm gonna slide it way up on my leader like that. Um, real nice, and it casts just like a dry fly. I mean, it, it feels like a dry fly. Uh, CJ Bobby says that kinks that also kinks your leader, right? This doesn't, cause it's straight in line. Check it out. This is straight in line. You have nothing to kink your leader. Um, if you, so let me think of a way you could. If you use that original amount that I had, where I had this like just wad in here, I could see that probably bending your line a little bit because um, it was just too much. Um, but this setup, this small amount, um, I mean, if you slide it down on there, I can get it to kink. It's actually hard to get this setup to kink um, like that even right there. Um, I'll slide it down as far as I can. And see if it will, but I I have I have very little issue with this kinking my line. Um, honestly, um, nothing like a like a thingamabobber. Um, so yeah, this is for um, again, I wouldn't take this out on the sack and go throw two you know throw an SSG and two stoneflies out there with this rig. This would be, might as well be yeah. This thing is gonna sink. But um, oh, you can do this too. I do this too. You should put that out and then take a. Uh, cut trim this to length you know if you don't need quite that much which you probably don't I'll just cut it right there now you have just this little little tuft really is all you need um, but yeah so it's not for heavy stuff um, it really isn't it really shines when you're doing when you're doing you know your small spring creeks and things like that um, when you're fishing relatively uh, low weighted flies um, emergers it's like my go-to you want to cover the co white color again we had a new joiner uh, as far as color white goes, color. As far as color goes, um, it it doesn't matter. In my opinion, this is an opinion uh, here. So somebody tell me if I'm wrong. Um, in my experience, fishing for relatively spooky fish, um, I've had them scare on a white indicator just as well as a, a uh, an orange one. I think it's more the splash and the surprise of a big opaque ball above their head. Um, I think that plays into it more than color. Color, I I, I tailor 100% to my, you know, um, where I'm fishing that day, um, or the weather outside. If it's real dark weather, actually, this is kind of funny. Use some word I'm mentioning. Um, we fish uh, here in uh, Northern California. We fish uh, Pyramid Lake, about three hours south in Nevada. Real famous uh, Lahontan cutthroat fishery. And years ago, when I was fishing there, I saw a guy fishing this like prescription-sized thingamabobber. I don't know where he bought the thing. I think he made it something but he painted them all black and I was like why are you why are you fishing black indicators he's like oh you can see them like like on these darker days you can see them really well and I was like that that does not sound right to me but it's true you go out there when, it, when the water is that weird almost like greenish color um the bright stuff for some reason um almost fades away to like an olivey that black is like the brightest thing it's really weird it's the only lake I've really ever thrown black but Thingamabobber started, he must have sent him a picture or something because a couple years later I, was, I saw Thingamabobber was selling black, huge black indicators and I was like, well, I know what that's for. Um, but New Zealand Strike Indicator, they make, a, they make a black yarn for a similar reason. But yeah, I tailor the color to, to um, not at all to the fish, to me. Um, color is, uh, is um, you know, important to me only. Um, so whatever color you see best um, for the situations you're fishing, like I said, um, you know, glass water, you can probably see almost any color just fine. When you're fishing like the, uh, um, you know, the pocket watery stuff where you have some turbulent, turbulent surface um, with that white stuff and swirls and things like that, um, white's going to be tougher, to, you know, obviously a little bit harder to see. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so I'd tailor that to your, um, to, uh, you know, your preferences. Um, so yeah, that's the, uh, that's the New Zealand strike indicator. Um, they're awesome for uh, for small spring creeks and things. Um, this bears a mention. Um, the Pulse of Pinchon floats. Uh, we still sell them. If anybody, uh, <laughs> we still sell a lot of these actually. Uh, this is my. I found a bunch of these in my grandpa's uh, old fishing vest, uh, and uh, I was interested as to what they were. 
and I tried them when I was a kid, I remember, and that was my first actual experience with an indicator when I was a kid, and I hated them, I thought they were <laughs> ridiculous. Uh, and, but no, there are, I wasn't doing them right at all. But, uh, but the idea is, uh, you just it's this butterfly shape, you pinch them onto your line, and now you have this little dot out there. You can't change the, you can't, once you set it, you're done. Uh, you, I, I don't know if you can actually peel them apart, but I, don't, I imagine you won't be able to. Um, they're not meant to float a whole heck of a lot of weight either, uh, much like the, uh, the yarn and the wool indicators. Um, but um, it's an option as well. We do get a lot of people who are like, this is what I use, this is all I use, this is how I, how I go. Um, and yeah, if you are interested in the pulse of pinch on indicators, we definitely carry those as well. Um, I don't even know if they have that. Yeah, I think if that's all we have for questions, I think. Um, that about sums up um, indicators. Um, Somebody yeah. asked about uh, doing a dropper rig, but we should probably save that for another. A drop, well, we'll talk about it a little bit. Drop a rig off of, uh, uh, or like the dry dropper rig that I showed? No, just a drop, uh, a 90 so, degree dropper rig. A 90 degree dropper rig? Yeah, I did that in the, <laughs> have them check out the tight line uh, video because I did that exact uh, knot, um, basically just a blood knot. Um, where you get a 90 degree dropper off of it, um, which is pretty sweet. If you go back to our old uh, our old videos, I think it was last week, right? We did that one. On YouTube or? Yeah, on YouTube or Vimeo, I think. Mm -hmm. um, go back and check that one out. And um, that's a tight lining specific video, but um, I do cover that um, that dropper rig, um, that setup. Um, so check that out on YouTube or Vimeo. Um, so yeah, that's about it. Um, easy as that. I hope you guys have a good Christmas, and um, we will be back, um, well, actually, this Tuesday. I'm going to think of a good time tip that uh, I'm going to be doing it for my house. Um, we're thinking about, uh, I have a way I store all my tying materials. Um, I'm, I'm thinking maybe if you guys are interested in a, in a storage system for your tying materials, I've, uh, I've worked out an okay one, <laughs> about as okay as other ones. So tune in for that. Uh, I've gotten some feedback. A lot of people like my... The way I do it, I'm still. It's still a work in progress, but um, tune in for that on Tuesday, and it'll be from uh, live from my house and my uh, my uh, personal time bench. So um, we'll see you guys then. Have a good uh, holiday, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. See you later.